Okay, in this video, first we will look at basic styling and formatting of wireframe widgets. Then we'll learn how we can use base styles to apply and manage widget formatting across the project. We'll learn how to set default styles for widgets and how we can overrule it by creating and applying custom styles. Now to the style tab, which allows us to change the visual formatting of our widgets. There are powerful ways of applying visual formatting across the project, but let's begin with the basics. As we select our object, the available formatting options are enabled. Remember, these options are different for each widget type. Here we can set the width and height of this widget, as well as be more precise about its position on the canvas. Base styles is our way of applying formatting to widgets across the project. We'll come back to this later. Next, we see some familiar formatting dialogues that you've encountered before. In the font options, we can set fonts, font weights, sizes, etc. With options for fill, line and border, we can modify the appearance of our widget substantially. Here you can add fills and even gradient fills. The facility is operated much in the same way as any other design software. You'll also find opacity settings here. So here we can see that Axia permits us to add some higher fidelity design. Something new in version 7 is that we have options to add drop shadows to objects and text. You can type in the corner, corner radius for relevant shape widgets here too, which is new for version 7 and a great help for getting pixel perfect design. Last but not least, we can select alignment for our widgets and add padding in the last area of this panel. Okay, so we've just added some formatting on uh, a one by one basis. Slow going, isn't it? Well we can select multiple items and apply changes across our selection. But as I said before, duplication is a bad thing. This is where base styles come in. Alluding to its web-bound cousin CSS, however not as powerful, we can set up a number of formatting rules which are applied to objects. We can then edit these styles later on and widgets will be updated across the project. I'm going to create a couple of paragraphs for this example and then let's look uh, let's open the widget style editor and take a look. There are two tabs under base styles widget defaults and custom. The key difference between the two is that the widget defaults tab permits you to edit formatting that is applied by default to widgets. As such this list corresponds to the widgets you find in the default wireframe widget library. Any change you make to paragraphs here, for example, will affect all existing paragraphs widgets in the project. And any new paragraphs you create will also have this formatting. Let's open the widget style editor again. Custom styles, as you can see, is blank. There are no rules yet. Custom style is formatting styles that you create and apply. These styles can be applied to any widget type. This is a very important distinction and allows us to employ a powerful technique very similar to the cascade in cascading style sheets. Let's explain how with an example for those not familiar with CSS. We have three paragraphs here. We have aspects of these widgets that we want to remain the same. For example, the font size, but we may want to have aspects that are different. We can create custom styles for this to create subcategories. I'm going to create a custom style called Angry. It's going to have red text. I'm going to create another style called Sad. This will have blue text. OK. I'm going to apply these custom styles to these paragraph widgets. So we have widget default formatting rules that cascade down to all paragraph widget types but have added more granular control over a new subcategory of widget. We've actually just created a subcategory of widget. This is a very powerful way of controlling the design in your projects. 
and this technique actually mimics how your designs will be coded up in CSS. Another point to get you thinking, say I want to create a rectangle widget now with a sad style. I can do that. Unfortunately, I can't go into much more detail here, but you're getting a glimpse of the power of styles. If you don't understand the cascading CSS, I suggest you do some reading up on the theory of cascading style sheets. Um, you can follow the URL here. A last important point about the cascade. If I set this paragraph to 20 directly in the styles tab, it overrules the base style specification and also disassociates it from the base style's control. You see, but you can always reapply the association by matching the settings here with the settings in the base styles dialog. And as you can see, the association is restored. The takeaway from this exercise is that a custom style will overrule a widget default and a rule applied directly to a widget will overrule a custom style. OK, let's remove that stuff and back to styling our menu. Let's create a primary menu style in our custom styles and apply it to our primary menu. Let's add some styles, uh, font size, font color, I want some padding too. Now let's apply it to our widgets. Select them all using Control or Command on Mac Click and then apply our new custom style which now appears in the base styles drop down. Et voila! To reiterate, the beauty and power of styles is that if halfway through your project the designer comes up with some updated design, we can easily go and update this across the project. Now we're starting to see how we can use Axia to apply formatting in varying degrees. We can drag out widgets to get some quick and dirty wireframes together uh, to quickly communicate concepts. Uh, or we can, as UX designers, set styles that indicate the hierarchy and relationships of the elements in the design, which is a critical factor in managing the user experience. These guidelines are great for visual designers when they come to skin the design. If we've applied our styles well, we can come back and quickly apply high fidelity design to really impress clients. We're about to move on to masters, so I think this is a good time to mention that you should use styles for applying common formatting rather than use masters, a mistake new users often make.